Welcome to Black Love Matters for this service therapy session for figuring out adulthood. Loving each other. Or finding Ernie Brock Michelle. Or Jay-Z and Beyonce. Who is you? I'm Neil. And I'm Nayambi. And this is episode 419. Y'all. Happy Monday. You back. You back. Be sure to leave one, two, three, four, five star rating and review on Apple Podcasts and on Stitcher and follow us on all forms of social media at Black Love Matters. That's black with no K. What's going on, baby? Child, we out of here. Last Monday of January. Ooh. And we about to be a month down. One month, 11 months ago. In 2022? It's rolling, ain't it? 2020 part didn't, two. Didn't you just... <laughs> Don't do that. When you just blinked, wasn't it just the first? It was. You're blinking again. Now we're about to go on Black History Month. Yeah, time away for no man. You know, between Black History Month, Black Love Day, I, February is one of my fave months. I know sometimes I get a bad rep because of the weather and it's the shortest month of the year or all that type of stuff, but I absolutely love February. Because also it's the precipice of spring. Mm-hmm. So it's like when you get through February, even if you have a snowstorm in March, you're like, well, it's March. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's going to be March and it's fine. <laughs> and even like it's April. Yes. Then it's April. Then it's the summer. Then we in um, sweltering heat. Um, then it's like, damn, it's hot. Yes. Fuck. Then it's time for Thanksgiving. <laughs> Do you realize those summer bodies are going to be actualized or not? <laughs> I'm like, y'all know it's going to be a um, Fupa Girl summer. Okay. So, uh, what? Okay. What you say? What's your reaction? Okay. It's going to be a Fupa Girl summer. So if you see me, the Fupa going to be out. It might be smaller. It might be bigger. It don't matter. One thing I know is going to be out. Okay. So get ready. I'm excited for it. <laughs> What you were saying? I'm gonna rub all types of coconut oil on that fupa. <laughs> Is there a fupa appreciation day? Listen, the first day of spring, <laughs> first day of summer. I'll talk to the sisterhood and those sisters to see if we can get a day out. Okay, we can get a proposal out for a holiday. Because <laughs> I'm sick of this shit. <laughs> Let me Google. I it. don't know if y'all know. Did y'all watch? Um, before we going don't worry, we are gonna talk about that Janet Jackson top jo- doc. But before that Janet Jackson doc, did y'all see, uh, I'm going to say Chrisette Michelle. K. Michelle has a show on Lifetime um, that's called, like, My Killer Body. And it's talking about all, like, it's basically botched surgeries. But it looks like it's more of a focus on women of color or, like, folks. You know, there's always already a show out there called Botched. But that tend to work on women, but make a little more money, right? Like, it's just a different demographic, mm-hmm. right? Like we talking about people who go get in booty shots and basements, right? Like that type of stuff. Um, and I don't even mean that to be no heat, no shade. Like they really that raw with it. And so from watching that show, it just showed me like it ain't worth it. When you saw it, I don't know if y'all seen that first episode. They had one woman who did a tummy tuck and her tummy tuck was so bad. Her whole stomach just was black in, in narcosis and it just fell off. Mm-hmm. And another woman had like some booty shots that didn't work in a silicone. I think it was silicone. Um, all the folks who watched it or know a little bit better, feel free to email call to correct me. But the silicone just start like leaking down her leg and it was just causing excruciating pain. Yeah, cool. and, and I was just like, and don't get me wrong. Y'all I'm pro body pro plastic surgery. I'm pro do whatever you need to do to make you feel better. But I also am pro pe- Use board certified surgeon, pro pay people they worth. If I say we got to play black women they worth, we also got to play plastic surgeons they worth. Mm-hmm. And it costs a lot of money <laughs> to get these surgeries. <laughs> so if it's anything under 20K, it's not worth it. I need the whole shit and I need all the credentials in order for me to be like, yes, sis, go get that mommy makeover. Yes, sis, go get that BBL. Yes, sis, go smash that poopa out. Hoopa, fupa out and stitch it to your throat. Okay? So, while you was talking, yes. I did some Googling about Fupa Appreciation Day. Okay. There's multiple days that the internet is talking about. The internet or yes. niggas? Niggas, the internet, all the above. Okay. So, the first day that I see is uh, the 20th of May. <laughs> Why is it 20th of May? I don't know. And then on, <laughs> on Urban Dictionary, yeah. it says August 10th. Oh. And it says you find a girl with a fupa yeah. and you have sex with her 10 times. 10 t- Okay. Get out of here. <laughs> Go away from here with this. And then on Reddit, there's a uh, subreddit that says, let's make May 7th fupa appreciation day. So I Even- think there are some days that we might be able to co-opt this yes. because that's not necessarily one day set in stone. Like, can we just make fupas in style? Like we did like big booties and titties. Like, can we just make having a fat fupa? Yes, and I realized I said fat twice. A fat, fat fupa. Just a thing of de- desirability. <laughs> <laughs> and when we just out here in our bathing suits, we'll let the fupa peek through a little. Like they do a toe cleavage. Oh, my God. 
but just do a little fupa cleavage. A little peep toe? Yeah, you know, oh. do a little peep toe. No, it's a fupa <laughs> toe cleavage. When the toe, look, I'm showing you, when it swoop down low, oh, it's supposed okay. to be higher, and you show a little bit of that, that's to call it toe cleavage. Uh-huh, okay. Y'all can't see it. I'm showing narrow. Gotcha. But can we do it with fupa? So if I put my panties on, and then I just height it a little above my thigh, and you see a little piece of that fupa meat. Mm. Girl, shake that fupa meat. Can we make that desirable? That fupa meat. <laughs> Let's start a movement. Hey. Anywho, check in for me. I will be remiss. Last week I did not acknowledge this. Hit it, Nero. Y'all know we lost Andre Leon Talent, a goat in the game in this fashion industry. Industry. Let me complete my words, honey. You know, Let's take a look all of the ways he made it at Vogue, being a tall, big black man, he came in there and didn't take no shit. He came in there twirling that caftan and that Louis Vuitton um, suitcase. And if it wasn't for some of the, the efforts he made, we wouldn't have the supermodels we have. We wouldn't have the um, house designers we have. Like, we would not have it because of him. So, again, I would be remiss if I did not acknowledge the impact that he has had in the fashion industry and also the African-American community. You know, I know some folks always have stuff to say about him. Um, but, again... We, we eat chicken, right? We know how to eat the chicken. We can um, spit out the bones and swallow the meat for the good stuff. So at this time, since he has gone on to the ancestors, we just go nourish ourselves on all the good meat he provided us in that fashion industry. Gotcha. Um, what you bring it to the film? Peach cobbler. Peach cobbler? Mm-hmm. Ooh, see, this is a hard one. Like, do I go to his roots mm. or do I talk about... Since you went to the roots with Peach Cobbler, I think I'm going to keep it high end and I think I'm going to get some macarons. Oh. Very expensive ones. I'm only going to bring 10. Because oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to let you know it ain't meant for everybody. It ain't. <laughs> all right, on that. I'm going to go be like just to his family. I'm going to have just enough for his family and all the other guests can look at me, give it to them. <laughs> R.I.P. Um, Andre Leon Talley, thank you for everything you've done. Let's take a look What noise that is? That's like the uh, the precursor of uh, zapping zapping zap Roger. This is yeah. oh, look at you, that's the first time I. I'm like the babies who listen. I hear a different instrument every time. The breakdown. Shout out to the goat Smokey Robinson. Mm-hmm. Also, y'all, I don't know if y'all know this, we got a snowstorm, and we chilled. Ashley, in our check in, we'll talk about this more. We basically had a weekend in bed. As soon as we knew the storm was coming, we made sure we had our food ready. Um, we had the um, Mabel set up, and we hunkered down for two to three days, and it was absolutely amazing. I don't, I regret nothing. What about you, Nero? It was dope. It was amazing. Um, something else that I celebrated this week is I have had my sister lots for over a year. Oh. You know, I ain't know until you know you go get your hair retwisted. They're like, oh, it's been a year, beloved. Y'all know the sister lots. They, they, you know, folks with sister lots, we a little neo soul, little granola. They be like, it's not a what they say? It's not a journey, it's a lifestyle, sis. You've been in a lifestyle for a year. This me. Excuse me. Okay. I thought you were about to start talking about my man. What lifestyle you Ooh. talking about? What you talking about? What is it's the, the lifestyle? lifestyle? I said, oh, thank you. You know, I like to confirm. My sister like getting y'all some coat shit. That, you know me. I had to confirm. What lifestyle you talking? <laughs> the sister style lifestyle, oh, sis. okay, 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 okay. Just I mean, making coke. sure. <laughs> What'd you say? <laughs> <laughs> what you say? I said the sister likes a uh, coat. <laughs> it's not a coat. You think people are locks in a coat? <laughs> no, but the sister, the ones who are the sister locks are. Why you say that? <laughs> because it's locks. It's a lifestyle. Y'all can only use a certain amount of shampoo. Y'all can't be putting none of those conditioners in y'all head. Y'all can only go to a certain. Y'all can only go to a certified, certain person yeah. who's certified and spent that money. Sound like a coat to me. Oh, you haters. Haters gonna hate. <laughs> Shout out to everybody else with Sister Lots. So I've been a year and I do love it. I'm beyond the pluck chicken phase, but I am not to the phase where, you know, I don't know if y'all seen some folks. For folks who don't know what Sister Lots is, first of all, Google it. It's easy to, to it's basically small lots, right? Mm-hmm. Like it's small interlots all over your head. Um, and I like it for the flexibility and like I'm able, if I wanted to, I literally could do five jailhouse braids straight to the back and put a weave on my hair mm-hmm. like and it'd be from like so i just like the, ver- the versatility of it or i can wake up in the morning shake it where it's straight curly i can do whatever i want like it's some people who like flat iron and hot curl 
your sister mm. locks, right? Like, because it's that thin, and you can like manipulate it as your own hair. Um, you know, I'm I'm known for doing a braid out, bantu knot out, um, that type of thing. I actually tried to curl it, and it was given too much 1990. Um, church girl like easter sunday mm. it was it curls a little too tight for me that's the other thing like it acts like your normal hair so y'all remember them old school like sponge curls if you sponge it then it'd be like this little barrel curl and mm. it don't go nowhere like that's how i was i was like oh this is too tight for me it ain't long enough but um i'm enjoying it um, i'm trying to get used to myself in it whenever i'm in detroit or some areas when i'm in certain black areas people always call me out about it like they're consistently way. like yeah yeah in a good way they're like what is that is them blocks Oh, it's them sister locks. I'm like, mm-hmm. Where I've never, there's been no other style people be like, is that a weave? Or like, you know, I don't mm. get the pull to the side. When you had locks, the people stop. I don't know if it's a sister lock thing or a lock thing. When you had locks, the people stop you? No. People have stopped me all the time. I think it's a, uh, it's a, it's a thing because they, people know. Like, people, you if you know, you know. Is it that? If you know, you, you know. Gotta, you got to be a particular woman. Yeah. To get them sister locks. What? I think Neil's being shady. I'm not. What it, what it but was I a think particular so. woman. But I think to to do the thing from what I've seen from the sister lock community. And are you talking about just me or other people? No, just in general. Where you see these other people? I'm just all over the streets. <laughs> Near allegedly, allegedly. No. Uh-huh. I know. <laughs> Tasha K taught you. Yeah. <laughs> go ahead. But y'all cause y'all got y'all can only go to a certain amount of uh beauticians, you know what I'm saying? Y'all can only go to a certified people and pay that certified money. Oh, and things of that sort. Not to certify money. Yeah. Like for locks. Like when I had locks, like shit, if you know how to palm roll, you good to go. What'd you but, say? Your, your lactation just learned from you too. Exactly. Oh. Or I had a friend who had locks and it's like, yeah, I just palm roll my shit. Well shit, palm roll my shit too. Oh. But with sister locks, oh. no. it's a whole different thing. It's about patterns, it's about grids and things of that sort. Words I ain't never heard being said with with, with, with locks. <laughs> You know, women be counting eight sister locks on YouTube. Be like, I have 95 I sister locks. I, not 95. It's just more than that. But, uh, I, I'm for real. They be counting how I many they got and shit. Yeah. So it, it be, you got to be a particular person to do this because mm-hmm. it's a lot from what I see. You, it, you can only go, you can you got to go six to eight weeks. Because if you go longer, your, your grid start messing up. Cause you got all this new growth, and then they got started all over. Got to cut your head off. Oh my god! Not know. your whole head. <laughs> <laughs> Nero said, like, "Throw the bitch away." <laughs> she didn't follow the rules. She didn't follow. That's the what rules. happens in the cult. <laughs> <laughs> Rule number one of Sister Locks is you don't talk about Sister Locks. <laughs> <laughs> well, I en- I'm enjoying them. Um, I think. I made the appropriate decision. Um, I'm not like some of the other sister locks. People like the only thing I regret is not getting them sooner. I don't know about that. Mm. Um, but I do think the space I'm in now, I really do um, appreciate it. Um, especially being kind of COVID time and it just provides a level of flexibility that I really like. Do I look different with my locks or no? You don't even know. Don't look at me now. Oh. Cause I got to braid it up. I got plaited up, honey. Oh. Mm-hmm. Um, Does it give different energies? You asked the wrong person. I would say sort of. And here's why. Because you, before you I went on I live with him and he said I'm asking the wrong person. You are. Uh-huh. And the reason I say this is because before that, you always wore your hair natural for as long as I've been with you. That's like, true. Like, I think the first couple of years you had a perm. But after that. It, it was you, a weave, not the perm. You had a weave. perm and a weave. Oh. But you had that. And, like, ever since then, you've been rocking your hair natural. So, like, yeah. at a certain point, it just looked like, like braids or twists. It just looked like you said. I almost gave my aunt away. <laughs> she be like, "Do you just untwist your hair like this every month?" I'm just saying. It. Sometimes she said, "Do it you do. untwist and retwist your hair every month?" I said, "No." Sometimes it do look like twists. Yeah. Sometimes it look like uh micro braids, but like shorter. Uh huh. So, like no, because I've seen you in this hairstyle before, like similar hairstyles. Okay. So it don't look different to me. Cool. I don't know if you. I don't know what you're looking. I'm not looking for anything. I'm looking for your honest no, opinion. Because I think sometimes you be fishing for a comment. I don't got to fish for no you compliment, be, honey. You, you do. You be fishing, and I don't I give don't it to I don't got to fish. It's just known. Oh, I be trying to be trying to figure it you out. You know, I believe in giving my own self a compliment. Oh, that's what you need to do then. Because, you, hey. know, you know, niggas be trying to test me, and they, and, and they always fail. <laughs> <laughs> also, at work, what I've um, experienced is some mic drop moments. Okay. I I had somebody at work appear basically come in um our peer meeting basically how do I explain this 
So I report into a director and all of the director's direct reports. We have like our weekly meeting. And I knew someone up when the director was like, oh, and pass it over to, we'll say Sandra for an update. And we had other people who were like delivering stuff. And usually we let people stay in the meeting. Like we're super transparent. But Sandra was like, could everyone who's not on the leadership team leave? And I was like, <laughs> I almost wanted to be like, Sandra, hold on. Let me go get some popcorn. Cause I know it's going to be good. <laughs> you know, everybody know that's cubicle warrior speak for, I got some shit to say. <laughs> I got some shit to say. And it's meanwhile, it's Friday at 4 30. So everyone's kind of looking at Sandra like, could this wait to Monday at 9 a.m.? <laughs> Instead nope. of fucking up my weekend, right? Because we we expected some bullshit. We don't know what the bullshit is. Like we don't know if like you know, and I, don't get me wrong, like, I work for a good company, so layoffs not on my mind, right? But are we talking about reorgs, restructures, or like something that's going to have huge implications that we need to go ahead and process because we're going to have to deliver some shit news to our people next week, right? Like, I'm thinking it's more of that. No. Sandra came in and was like, as you all know, it's been amazing, like, working here with you all, and we always talk about blah, 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 and chasing our dreams and transparencies, and you all each inspire me, and you know, the direction that we're headed in, blah, blah, blah. She said, long story short, my last day going to be March 1st because I'm open. I ain't going to tell you why she opening up so, so you won't track her down. I'm opening up a cupcake shop. <laughs> be blessed. Everybody was on the call silent. Look, everyone's like, wow, good clap hands near. Yay, Sandra, you're opening up a cupcake shop. Oh, my goodness. And you know, everyone's trying to, like, connect dots. We know this. your project management skill going to be amazing in this cupcake shop. Then you got a couple people who be trying to do well, but they still shady. You eat cupcakes? This is me. Melinda, it doesn't matter. <laughs> you don't have to eat cupcakes to open up a cup shop. <laughs> and basically she gave us this whole rant about how she got to follow her dream and basically working here, killing her. Um, and then all of us kind of looked at each other and was like, congratulations. But it was just such a fucking mic drop moment. Mm -hmm. To be like, fuck, fuck money. Fuck you bitches, get money. I'm living my life. Y'all fucking miserable. Peace out. Yeah. And it was just something about it. Like, if I quit my job, I want to be able to quit. Like, I'm quitting because I'm literally chasing my dreams. I'm following my dreams, bitches. And I'm financed to do it. And I'm out of here. Ho. And guess what? Y'all gonna have to cover my shit. Because <laughs> that's what she did say. I'm telling you all this early because we can figure out my um, transitionary plans. My extra strategy. AKA. I'm out here. Who going to take. I know y'all already stretched, but who going to take on my extra work? Who going to take over my shit? Cause because you know I'm we ain't here. doing no hiring to spring. And guess who not waiting to spring? Me. Not me. Because she even said, I was going to try to wait until H2 when we were doing our hiring so I can ramp up the person who will be taking my place. But. No, y'all are killing me here. I got to get the fuck <laughs> up out of here. <laughs> so if uh and then then she hit us with i want to tell y'all this now because i'm going to be actually out for two weeks because i'm closing on my property <laughs> <laughs> so you all take this two weeks to figure out not even her participating like y'all take these two weeks to figure out how to best divide up my work if there's certain pieces of work that i'm working on that y'all like maybe y'all can figure that out now and also my team don't tell them nothing yet but we can figure out, like, if anybody want to take over my team or should we divide the team up or we hire someone, we promote someone. I really don't give a fuck. Because I'm out this it's motherfucker. <laughs> like, it just kept coming back to, like, because on March 1st me. or whatever today I'm leaving and I'm chasing my dreams. And my dream is not to figure out my contingency plan. Nope, my business the, continuity plan. It's to open up these damn cupcake shops. I'm going to open up a cupcake shop. And I'm going to sell cupcakes. And that's going to be my dream. Thanks. Oh, and yes, I did stay into this date, so I got the bonus from the company. Because <laughs> as y'all know, in tech, tech gets bonuses, and bonuses usually are paid out at the end of that January, early February. Yes. So she's leaving right after that bonus is paid out. It was just such a mic drop moment <sighs> that I appreciated it. It was amazing. Like, it brought me joy almost. And don't get me wrong, I know I'm going to have some extra work from this, mm -hmm. but it literally brought me, like, you know how you just start, I feel like I start smizing. Look. <laughs> I feel like I wanted to take note to be like, if I ever leave, literally keep coming back to I'm chasing my dreams. And then she was like, I recommend y'all to do the same. I was on the side text with someone. I was like, I don't even know what my dream is. <laughs> <to chase." laughs> Ooh. Ooh, 
and then on the counter of that, so after I'm coming off my joyous experience and also being um, inspired by this coworker, then it was somebody else who left, not in our department, but the broader company who did this thunk piece on LinkedIn was like, I'm leaving this company after this many years because I'm burnt out in this. And guess what my announcement is? I'm leaving this company to go nowhere. I just need a fucking minute. <laughs> and also nobody here to save you kick rocks. And all the whites were like, and all the colonizers, um, not just say just white people, it wasn't just white people, colonizer. And y'all know who colonizers is. Go back to our previous episode to get the definition. Um, was like, slow hand clap. No one's here to save you. Then I had to roll my eyes, AKA, the, also for y'all know in a virtual world, rolling your eyes in a virtual space is turn off your camera. <laughs> um, in a corporate setting is, ain't black women and black people been telling y'all to save yourself? We've been telling y'all that. But this white man who done got burnt out, done said at one time on a think LinkedIn piece that basically almost went viral. You might see it, right? To save yourself. And y'all congratulating it. And this is amazing work. I almost asked my um, co-worker, was she looking for an HR person at her cupcake shop? <laughs> <laughs> Pay me a cupcakes. <laughs> So that was some of my mic drop moments in the reflections I'm doing on work this week. So I'm interested to see how that's going to play out for the next couple of weeks for not only our peer group, but also my director. I'm just curious to see how she's going to handle and navigate through it. You ask me how I'm doing fine. I don't lose sleep about my job. Like y'all don't work in HR. So we worried about hiring and numbers on a cause. I'd be like, Oh my goodness, these numbers, how, Oh, how, how are we going to reach it? Child. As soon as I close that computer, I put my feet up and go to sleep. <laughs> I don't give a fuck we never hit the numbers. <laughs> like, y'all y'all got the secret sauce. You know what the numbers is. You know what it takes to hit the numbers. We going to do it or we not going to do it. They got an abacus out just trying to. That's it. That's it. Like, and that's, why I don't, that's what I mean why I don't lose sleep. Not that I don't care about people getting hired, right? Because I know jobs change people's lives and people need living wages. And I'm lucky enough to work for a company that pays very, very well, right? So I know once people work for a company that changes lives. But I'm also not about to feed into the trope of, oh, my goodness, how are we going to figure it out? How is it going to spend? You know how to fuck to figure it out? These are some people you want to hire. This is how much it costs per hire. This is how many recruiters you need to do the hiring. I don't know what else you want. Ugh. A plus B, equal, one plus one equals two. Yes. So I, I'm not doing calculus. <laughs> now you can choose not to do it. One plus one then ain't one plus um plum plus zero equals one then. <laughs> and that's fine too. But I'm not going to lose sleep over trying to do, tra doing simple addition to make it calculus. Mm. Talk about where the co sign, cosine, and if I took the variable, then put the quadratic. No. Hire the people. Or not. Mm. Y'all choice. Above my pay grade. Do it or not do it. Do it or not do it. Just let me know. I'm, I, I get paid. But you're going to get these eight hours. And then when the clock strikes. I'm done. <laughs> I'm what? Done. What what is the um cubicle warrior I wrote? Camera off. <laughs> camera that is the eye. If you're ever in a place that the person had a camera off and it certainly go off, they're rolling their eyes at you. <laughs> so that's what's going on. But y'all, remember how I said we got a special like guest coming on? Drum roll, please. No, we don't have that. So. Oh, we don't got that. What we got? <laughs> Horns, please. Um, for our Black Love Day episode, we're gonna have Sham Booty on. <laughs> All right, y'all know who Shampoo is? The intimacy expert? Come on, you better go check out her page and say you excited for her to be on Sh um, Black Love Matters. Mm -hmm. um, on Instagram, we're going to do some things where if y'all want to ask questions about intimacy, you can keep it R, but not X. You know, we have a very transparent community. We don't want to scare Shan now. Don't, <laughs> don't want to scare her, okay? So keep it R. <laughs> don't send pictures. You can don't it. be embarrassing us when company when company come over here. Don't y'all embarrass us. I can keep it scanning, Max. <laughs> so don't be coming over here like we don't have couth and that we aren't grown ups and we can have conversations about intimacy and sets and relationships and the norms that are there and they shouldn't be there. You know this is a safe and welcoming and affirming place, but I know some of y'all cuts the fuck up. Don't y'all come over here with that bullshit. Bring the Skinamax. <laughs> Don't y'all embarrass us in front of Shan. We, we, we pitched ourselves as holistic. 
<laughs> then y'all gonna come over here and embarrass us. <laughs> Say, don't touch nothing don't touch nothing but yeah like i'm very excited for her though like i love how progressive shan is i love how um transparent she transparent she is with her like work and life like it's all um the way she just does it and put it out there it's just so raw and beautiful like between her and her um her husband and like their relationship like i i so admire how brave and vulnerable they always are they get that cute ass baby right like it's just all the things and shout out to her like she she has this amazing um like book and y'all should read the book and we might give some giveaways like it's just i'm very excited to have someone like her on our podcast and also she's an expert in that area right like near and i aren't an expert when it comes to like intimacy and all these different types of questions right mm. like but we, we do have our lived experience right and we share that with you so i always enjoy to be in a room with someone who is an expert in that area but also an expert who looks like us right mm. who who gets the unspoken right like we don't have to be in a situation where we have to explain to her like well you know sometimes with the blacks and browns blah 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 right it's already there so i'm just so excited to um, have a good conversation with her get to know her more maybe answer a few questions from us Niram and i we will have some and then from you all so yeah, it'd be dope. shout so, out for black love day and intimacy and yeah. asking those questions and attachment and like dating and how your relationship evolves like i'm just i, I don't know where it's gonna go like we're literally gonna um really go where the vibe energy takes us yeah. so um, i'm just super excited about it I'm excited about it well um mm-hmm. uh, if y'all want to send some voicemails send some voicemails 508-794-1111 when you call though like yeah. you gotta say here's <laughs> my question for sham booty <laughs> don't get into that hey and, and, night, and then y'all just saying like four vo- <laughs> voicemails and i gotta go through it because she only got a little bit of time so greet us hey what up like when it's just us you could do that right because mm-hmm. we here but she only got a little bit of time so greet us say what's up yeah and then here's my question for shan booty <laughs> okay that's the script that is the script <laughs> But no, I'm excited. I am so excited about it. I've been actually a low key um, stan um, for her, stan fan, follow of her for a very, very long time. So um, I'll try to find the fan girl out too much. But you know, honestly, anything that's black women, black people, brown people doing something, I- I'm Issa Rae on that. I'm room for everybody, black and brown. So anything that we can do to help elevate um, the work she's doing, especially the intimate space space. Yep, we're down for it, too. So I'm super, super excited. So stay tuned. That'll be right around Black Love Day when the episode goes live. Cool. All right, Nero. Uh, what's going on with me? So a couple things. I don't know if I talked about this last week, but your boy is your inbox again. <laughs> Two weeks in a row. <laughs> Two weeks in a row. It's Pre-COVID. Two weeks in a row, and this nigga is zero inbox. <laughs> I am on cloud nine. Zero inbox is a free in place. So let me tell you about this. Zero inbox like taking your vitamins, working out, and drinking your water. Exactly. Oh my goodness. And with a green smoothie for bonus. Green smoothie and add a verified check mark. Nigga. The thing about this 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 zero inbox. What was it? How many times you did this? This 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 zero (laughs) inbox. (laughs) Not three times. Is that once your inbox is zero? Nigga, you still got to do the work. Yes. That Todd set up. Ain't nobody tell me about that. I was using the inbox as an excuse not, not to, to do, do work. work. Now that my inbox is zero, I'm looking around like, where the fuck? You want me to actually do work want now? Me to Scheme that set up. Not happening. Mm-hmm. So, as much as I'm happy and excited about the zero inbox, there's still a lot more work to do. Duh. <laughs> Duh. And that is definitely the scheme. That Ty said, people don't tell you to be productive, you got to do work. <laughs> <laughs> they don't tell you that. We like to see the Instagram. What a, what's that Instagram thing where they push it on the, the screen? Where they be like, oh, I must do this. And mm-hmm. then it was like, and then a few months later, <laughs> then it's all yeah. done. Yeah. Yeah. That take time. Yeah, that's me. It just don't. <laughs> my inbox is, my you know inbox is zero. About? Yes. Like, I don't know. Like, this is me say. working hard. Trying to do, it. yeah. Twelve months later, <laughs> this, this is me. This still me. What? <laughs> so, it's it's a, it's a journey. Yes, because I'm still gotta do work, mm-hmm. and I'm kind of mad because like I got the zero inbox, and there's work is like that to do list is. I might have a zero inbox, but that to do list is not that zero. <laughs> the d- inbox inbox should truly just be 
a way to organize your thoughts, right? Like you shouldn't use your inbox as like this to-do list. And I think that's what a lot of people get caught up on. Like they're like, oh, if I get to these, these inbox, these, your email, and then I'll use it as a to-do list. But if you do that, it never goes on, right? Like you have to use your inbox as a system to do the work, to do to the work with the, the most priority. The thing is the, the using email inbox to really figure out what, what is the system to figure out what's the actual work you got to do. Yeah. What have you found out? about like using your working style like what tips would you give people um I, I think the main one is that um now i'm trying to figure out like all right now this inbox is zero now i got this to-do list trying to make sure i go through it in a way that's most um what is it urgent and important because mm. the other thing is that you'd be jumping around this to-do list but like nah, i don't want to do this right now nope not doing this i'm avoiding that too yep and then you get done with all the other stuff and you got the five real things that you really need to be doing for work that like really will make an impact in, in what you're doing for your job and don't want to do them. Mm-hmm. So that's where I'm at. Absolutely. Uh, other than that, you know, like we said, we had this, uh, this snowstorm and Mabel was out there uh, in her four by four. Tell the people what the four by four is. Uh, four by four is when Mabel got her snow gear on. She got her winter coat on with her winter boots. We need to take a picture and put it on Instagram. She be having her winter coat, her winter boots. And she'd be out there running and walking in the snow. Sometimes she'd be slipping and sliding. But she hit the four by four. But she, she hit the four by four and then she just stopped. Skirt. <laughs> like so it, it's slipping. a trip. You catch her from fishtailing. It's a trip to see Mabel in this fucking snow, especially this snow was taller than her. Yes. So the way she was gallivanting, trying to get over the snow and, and hopping over, over uh, hopping over uh, the snow banks. Yes. Quite hilarious. Oh my goodness. How was it? Um, any surprises when you were out there? Cause I think I took her out there when it was coming down, but you took her out there when it was bad. Horrendous. Who was horrendous about it? I'm going to tell you. Like no, it wasn't Mabel. It was the niggas of New York. The what? Thing, yes. <laughs> so like now I understand like, so for example, it's trash day. Yes. So trash has been out there for longer than 48 hours. Mm-hmm. Niggas did now shovel the snow on top of the trash. Cause you know, New York ain't got no garbage cans. They just throw their trash bags out um, on the on the curb. Oh my God. So now uh, snow is on top of the trash bags. I'm wondering when the trash people are gonna come. Never. Because that Saturday. Because I, I feel like the rats are just starting to eat through it. I think the rats just living in the trash. That's that their house. That's their condo. Because it's nothing. Because uh, it's recycling. So yeah, I can see how they're using some of the cardboard as they just uh, keep it warm. Yes. Uh-huh. So you got that, and then you know some of these landlords don't really shovel the snow like they're supposed to. No. So. Instead of shoveling the whole sidewalk, they just shovel one line. Just one it's line. It's very little, too. It yes. is, is not plus size. It's literally the absolute minimal I amount agree. of work. I agree. And that shit is frustrating. I, I, I would, you're talking about the one around the corner? Yes. Oh, my goodness. I feel like I could barely walk down it. <laughs> yeah, you. I know exactly what you're talking about. I felt claustrophobic. These we only got about eight inches. are doing absolutely the the, uh, the, the, the least. Yeah. You know how niggas do the most? They doing the least. They are doing the least. And yeah. it's it's horrible. Luckily we stay near like As a school say they and library. Law, least yeah. amount of work. Luckily we stay near a school and library. That shit is like cleared up. But like the stuff schools. leading up to that. Yeah. Horrendous. I agree. That was a win living by some of these schools in that library in some of the libraries. That's mm-hmm. been clutch. Yeah. Um, as far as like when it comes to like cleaning. Or even like, you know, when there was like rains and flooding, like people do, the state do come make sure all those things are cleared and taken care of. Mm-hmm. And also it's a place for Mabel to go. Or child, not even Mabel, just me to go. Yeah. So it does. Um, like those places don't get so horrible because they tr- traditionally take priority here. Big facts. Mm-hmm. Um, other than that, you know, I'm going on my therapist uh, interviews. <laughs> y'all know me? Um, How long you going without a therapist? Um, I would say about six months. I feel to be therapy free. Sometimes you need a break. I, I do need a break. I need. Sometimes a break. you need a break from therapy. Sometimes you do need a break to like. And people don't talk about that to like live do. and yes. like live life and not be in constant reflection. Yes, I agree. So I, I'm glad that I went through. I, I would say since we moved to New York, because I had a therapist. We yeah. had a couple sessions here in New York, mm-hmm. and she's like, "All right, nigga, you in New York? It's one thing I would rather. She's like, I would rather fight with the IRS than fight with the licensure board. So yeah. this is the last one." So then I went on a journey of like interviewing other people. It went bad. And it went bad. So I was like, all right, I'm going to take a break. And I told Niram he's been lucky because usually therapy is like dating. Mm-hmm. And, usually, and usually, usually, not all the time, the first person you go to ain't the one, right? The first person I always say you go to is like ripping the band aid off. They're like, oh, 
I can get out here. I can do this. I can live. I enjoy talking, but not this person. Mm-hmm. But Niram always, he's been, so, and I hate to use always endeavor, those types of things. But when Niram has been going to see therapists, it literally be like fireworks. Yes. And he'd be like, they understand me. They get me. They're available at Wednesday at 1 p.m. The only time I've been like, everything falls into place. Yes. And so he go have one therapy session, which is like, Rrr. this is whack. He was like, is everyone, Nero was, I hope he's qualified. Did you check their credentials? He was like, I don't know if they qualified to do therapy. I said, everybody just don't rock with everybody. Yeah, because it started meeting some of these other personalities. Like one therapist, he didn't even look at me. Look at me. He was too busy typing down every word I said. I said, nope, this is not going to be it. Well, you got to tell the folks who you were looking for. What's your credentials? Because just like dating, you have to have certain expectations that when you're going in. Um, I, I think this time around, I was looking for a black male f- specialist. Okay. All right, not a black male specialist, but a black male therapist, right? Mm-hmm. Like most of my therapists have been like uh, mostly women. I had yeah. a couple white men, yeah. uh, but mostly black women. And it was cool, but I think uh, the 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 one I really had and I really liked in California, evidently we can't meet. The couple I had in Detroit, like, it was good. However, I just felt like the style that they, they use, which is like CBT, Cognitive Behavior Therapy. Uh-huh. Um, even one of my therapists is like, yeah, you might be a little surpassed that because, you know, she's like, you, you start now already, like, know the tips and tricks and questions that you're about to ask and yada, yada, yada. I was like, okay, yeah, like, you know, I understand that. And she's like, yeah, you know, you might as well want to look into, like, having a man since you ain't never had one. Like, just try it. Just different style. Try therapy. different ones out. Yeah. So I went on that journey when I first got here. And like I said, uh, one of the dudes is like a fuck boy. The other. Uh, Please tell me, how does this therapist a fuck boy? So, yeah. How you doing today? <laughs> so you, so you in therapy for what again? Oh. Oh. Okay. Hello. That's how I was. Uh-huh. And then I was like, no, nah, I can't meet this nigga no more. What? So then I found another black man. And then him. Yeah, so X, Y, and Z. Click, clack, 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 clack. <laughs> you said click, clack. Bat, bat, bat. Every, every tie, question, tie, tie. He, he just typing. I'm like, this is. Do he is. respond? Do he make any noises? Mm-hmm. Or you just hear him typing? You just hear him typing. It's like I say something, and then he asks for a follow-up question. Yeah. And then he's like, continue typing. Can't do this one. And then one therapist was like, yeah, do you mind if I just record this? Hell, Hell no. Nah. No. No. No, you, well, you ain't about to get me on no tight change. Well, I used to record all my therapy sessions. Well, I'm not well, going what? for you. No. No. Hell nah. no. No. You can't record me. So I then. You get your notepad and get clickety clacking. So for New Year's, you know, me and Naomi went over goals. And I was like, yeah, my goal this year is to, you know, get back in therapy and find, you know, a black man. Um, who can, you know, help me guide me through some of these parts in life as I'm getting older. Like I'm closer to 40 than I am 30. So like I need it, I need a little bit more like guidance and forethought. Yeah. So I started interviewing these therapists. And I had three interviews so far. So I had one dude, he was a black dude, he was like, you know, I only do short time therapy. I was like, What? <laughs> he said I do smart goals. And he said, you know, I'm a type of therapist that only does eight to twelve sessions with a client before I let them go. Damn. And I say, well, I'm looking for long-term therapy. He said, I need at least a year. <laughs> and he was like, well, I ain't the one. Lissy, no. Lissy, no. But I can try to find you some uh, referrals right. or something. Okay, that's what's up. That's what's up. I like so, the honesty. So then I found another therapist, and he was cool, you know. Um, but it really wasn't, like, like the vibe or the kind of – like I said, it, it was a shorter session. Yeah. So it, it was cool. Like, I, I could have seen, like, how it could have, like, built into something for a long term. And then I had this last therapist. Give him an alias because you're going to be talking about him a lot. (sighs) I can already tell. (laughs) Let's call him Smitty. Let's call him Smitty. Yeah. (laughs) So then I have this other therapist. I thought I had one therapy session. I'm going to come back and have another therapy session. Uh So Smitty is asking me all types of questions. You know, first question that really was like a, almost like a red flag was like, so how are you with confrontation? This is Smitty asked you. Yes. I've never been asked that in therapy. And I was like, you know. Unless I say I want to work on that. How are you? I said, well, what do you mean? Like, you know, I'm a nigga from Detroit. So oh. depending on what it is, I, I go to war for mine. Oh. Mm. And she's like, well. S- Smitty's unimpressed. Yeah. Uh-huh. She's like, well, my therapy, uh, my, you know. So then he goes, well, what type of therapy have you had in the past? I was like, well, it's usually been CBT. 
and things of that sort. He's like, yeah, you know, I'm not really for CBT. Like, yeah, you know, they want you to write down and write down your thoughts and journal and, and get to your feelings. No, I'm more about getting straight to the point. So have you ever heard of confrontational psychodynamics? What the fuck is that? No, Smitty, I don't have a PsyD. <laughs> Smitty. I don't have a PhD. I don't, Smitty. I've never heard of it. <laughs> I don't know what the fuck that is. What is it again? Say it again. Confrontational psychodynamics. <laughs> it's not like about to be some bullshit. Mm, that's what it does. <laughs> so then we go into the, uh, you know, we continue talking. So, you know, we, he telling me to spill, yada, yada, yada. And I was like, well, that sounds, uh, it's, it's something I've never been a part of or not <laughs> been a part of. Um, but like, Nero said, I believe in monogamy. <laughs> <laughs> but like, I'm willing to like, give it a shot. Yeah. So, and I was like, well, you know, what should I call you? He's like, what? I said, what should I call you? He was like, Doc, Smitty, Dr. Smitty Jones. I don't give a fuck what you call me. I'm talking to you right now. I said, oh, what the fuck? <laughs> oh, my God. What's the thing? What's the line? <laughs> what? Which one? <laughs> <laughs> Which one? <laughs> All of them. <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> So Smitty done told you he do punch a nigga in the throat therapy. Yes, confrontational psychodynamic. Punch a nigga in the throat therapy. Yes. Then he was like, what should I call you? And he said. I don't give a fuck what you call me. Doc, Dr. Smitty, Dr. Smitty Jones, nigga off the street. I don't give a fuck what you call me. We in therapy right now, nigga. Who you talking to? Who else on the screen? Right. I know who the fuck you talking to. I said, what the fuck? (laughs) (laughs) No, it's actually more like. I was sitting there like, what the fuck? He said, you said you was okay with confrontation. I said, oh, shit. I said, oh, so I'm about to fight you, huh? But you, <laughs> could you ever do that in person? I, what you would have did if you said that in person? I don't know. I would have done Viola Davis. And I, got was, my bad. I was so taken aback. That's what you need, though. But I was like, well, fuck it. Let's just go on this Let's ride, go. then. Let's do it. You know, so I'm over here trying to laugh this shit off. So both of y'all choose violence today. Yes. So I laughed this shit off. And then, you know. You was laughing to keep from crying. He's like, all right, we got 30 minutes left. Like, what? <laughs> Like Meanwhile, what's not something, the time clock in the back. What's something that we can do in 30, uh, 30 minutes? Oh, so he's trying to solve problems today. Yes. In the intro session. Mm-hmm. Not tell me about you. Did so, he ask you to tell you about yourself? Very low. <laughs> he said, I don't give a fuck about yes. that. Let's focus. Okay. <laughs> so, you know, we go through this thing. He's like, well, you need boundaries. Uh-huh. Because I'm talking about like, you know, um, just like for family stuff. Yeah. He's like, you need boundaries. Uh-huh. I'm like, okay. Yeah. And he's like, this is how you say it. And I was like, oh, that's cool. But, like, family ain't going to roll with that. Mm-hmm. I don't give a fuck what the fuck family say. Are you going to do it or not? Because it's difference between a boundary and a wall yeah. and a fence. You putting up fences, yeah. not a boundary. <laughs> so He's intense. Intense. Yeah. So then we go on. We finally get through that session. And then he's like, all right. He's like, all right, well, we got five minutes left. Or like, I don't know, ten. <laughs> ten <laughs> I minutes love this left. countdown. I love this countdown. And I was like, well, you know, um, family planning. I was okay. like, you know, and me and my partner, we were thinking about uh, family planning. However, this has been like one of the things that's really been holding us up. We both have focused on career, yada, yada, yada. He says, Nero, look at me. <laughs> What, like, who else you looking at? Yeah, he said, Look at you, do it again. Okay. Look, Nero, yeah. look at me. Uh huh. Are you ready? I said, yeah. Yes. If you are not unequivocally, um, if you're not going to uh, unequivocally be there for that child, no matter what, you should have a kid. So he said, That's the only thing you need to answer. Say it again. <laughs> if he said, not, The only question you need to know their <laughs> the response only to. The qu- only question you need to know a response to if you are unequivocally going to be there for that child. If the answer is yes, then yes. Have that baby. If no, no don't. don't have a baby. So the baby don't give a fuck. <laughs> <laughs> and I was sitting there like, ooh, this is intense. So the baby don't give a fuck about no damn money. Mm-hmm. Baby don't give a fuck about nothing. Baby care about maybe, maybe, he's like, maybe four walls and a roof. But that baby give a fuck about you. Yeah. So if you're unequivocally going to be there for that baby, yeah, do then it. have that baby. If not, but if not, don't do it. Don't have no fucking baby. The fuck we flam- family planning for. How did you leave with this? So. <laughs> We're sharing that. Is that what we should have? <laughs> so. We need um, other folks to chime in on. This concludes our session. Um, and then he's like, you know, we have five minutes left. <laughs> I told you to keep counting down. It's a countdown for me. I would like to uh, wrap up. How are you feeling today? 
I'm like, this shit is intense than a motherfucker. Raw, <laughs> open. So yes, this I told you I do confrontational psychodynamics. I said, well, it's a little bit different than from what I'm used to, but you know. <laughs> I'm, I'm fucking speechless. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, well, I can pull it back if you need to, but it looks like you need more pushing. Look like nobody pushed your ass. So, would you like to schedule another session? Oh, he made you choose this? Yeah. He asked you this? Yeah. You should have like, email me, call me. I'm, look, I'm available next Monday. He just gave you the time. I'm available next Monday and next Wednesday. What you say? I said, shit, I guess I'll sign do Monday. Up. This you sign me up. Sign, and then, sign me up for the licking, for the whoopings. And so then I just went to go lay on the couch. <laughs> so I said, I'm Nero came in there with me because in my <laughs> office I have a couch. And they were just laid across the couch. I said, is you okay? I said, this, I said, that was by far the most intense therapy session I ever had in my life. <laughs> but you made it. But I made it. But you made it. And I was like, you know what? This nigga got some points. This, <laughs> once you get through the, um, what is it called? That punch a nigga in the throat yes. technique. What's it called? Psycho the, conflict. The, the confrontational psychodynamics. <laughs> we might need some of that in the black community. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> We might need some of that. So that was what well, that was. He gonna therapy. get his own section. We gonna call it Smitty's Corner. Yes, because <laughs> y'all gonna have to go through me with this. Yeah, we, he, he ain't just doing it alone. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to go through somebody or talk to somebody. I'm gonna have to have a, a therapy session for after therapy. Therapy session. So this we gonna call it Smitty's Corner. Yes. So Smitty tidbits for this week is <laughs> if, one. What's the, what's the difference between boundary and fences? What do you say? <laughs> Smitty's Corner. You have to put up that boundary and you have to abide by it. Okay. That's the boundary. Okay. If not, you're living by a fence. You can knock over fences. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. And then two, the question you should ask yourself if you need to have a kid is. If, if you are uh, if you are unequivocally, uh, what is that? What was that? If you are unequivocally, if you are unequivocally going to be there for that child. Then you can have it. Then you can have it. If the answer is no, don't do it. Yes. So meaning they don't care about um, ability, disability, gender, sexual orientation, how much money they got, who don't got the money, when they got the money. Mm-hmm. None of that should matter. Yes. If the answer is you're going to be there for that child. Are, uh, are you unequivocally going to be there for that child? Yeah. If the if answer, the answer is, is no, yeah. don't have no kids. Next question. Did he say you going to follow up with that or anything? <laughs> yeah. He some he, other stuff. He's but. like, you know, he's like, you know, of course we need to continue to unpack this, but. Being that we only have seven minutes left, I'm just gonna hand lay it out for you. Usually, people are like we'll talk about it next time. Yeah. Not well. This is seven minutes. This is what I can give you. Look, I'm giving the best I got. <laughs> being that it's seven, being that we got seven minutes left, let me just go ahead and lay it down for you. He said, "Oh shit!" <laughs> Shout out to Smitty. Yes. Smitty's corner. So we gonna see. Yeah. I don't, and we gonna see how long I can I can I can abide by Smitty. Because let me tell you, something about this confrontational psychodynamics make me want to fight this nigga. <laughs> That's what I say. How would it be in person? I don't know. But it make me want to fight this nigga. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yes. Thank you for sharing there. Thank you for your transparency and mm-hmm. vulnerability. Um, and, and he a black man. Yes, he a black man. Ooh, I might have to good. fight Smitty. <laughs> How old is he? Um, Late 40s, early 50s. A nice good age. Mm-hmm. Who then lived enough life, mm-hmm. but also aware of the bullshit that's happening. Yes. Jesus. All right. I'm about to fight this nigga. Cool. We're going to go into some pillow talk. Yeah, let's go ahead and do it. Let's do a little bit of pillow talk. Y'all, we stayed in bed the whole weekend. Mm-hmm. It was we li- amazing, too. We literally only got out of the bed to walk Mabel, wash our ass, eat food, and hydrate on water. We literally run computers in the room, watch movies, even Mabel. We made her a patty. She laid in her bed the whole weekend. We drew the shades and we rode the snowstorm out. And it was beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. The one thing we did do, we did go out once, I should say. Friday night, we actually went to a restaurant. We went very early um, because there was no crowds. But near the restaurant got sick. I surely did. Or like nauseous, what you said. We went to like this Thai spot. Yeah. I thought it was really good. But Nero's know. like, this shit too spicy. He said, it's too much know. dynamics going on that place. here. Something game. I don't know. I was think it indigestion? Was no. Mm-hmm. I know what indigestion feel like. This is literally like, I don't know. Nero started sweating. I started smiling. Because here's the thing. I had a dish. She was like, it's spicy. You like spicy. And I was like, mm, not really. And I was like, how spicy is it? Is this like white people spicy or is this like Asian spicy? She's like, it's Asian spicy. You should have known from there. So I'm like, does this look good on Yelp? I'm like, give me the dish. Yeah. Start eating it. Niami having conversations. You know, we have, you know, Niami love to have a deep conversation. Over dinner and a splash. Over dinner. Yeah. And a splash. 
And then as we started to go, like my stomach started gurgling. He started moving. And I'm sorry. He moving the table. Shit. You know, we in these tight little places in the corner. You know, they got us all spread out. So we they got us pushed in the corner. And you know, my anxiety and depression. I'm thinking to myself, like, oh my God, I'm about to just throw up all over Niami. I said, I gotta get the fuck up out of here. <laughs> so I was like, hold that thought, baby. So now I go to the like, bathroom. Oh, I don't and somebody already drink. in there. Yeah. And he was just And so now there. I'm like pacing. Yeah. And she's like, No, you can sit down. You can I said, No, no, no. I, I gotta stand up. It's like, oh, okay. And I just looked, I just went in the bathroom. I thought he had bubble guts. I said, no. he about to, I hope he got the poopery, honey. Mm-mm. And it wouldn't come out, but I was nauseous in the mud. Do you went in the bathroom? And you, did you pray? I didn't pray. Usually sometimes I do. If I'm oh. in public places and my body doing something I don't need it to do, I go to the Savior. It's beyond me. I did put some water on my face, though. <laughs> I said, oh, my God. And then what was your thing when you came at the table? Was you going to lie to me? Because I was like, are you okay? And- I was like, because this me, I was like, you want dessert? And you want a second? I was gonna get a second round of drink as dessert. And, and Aaron looked like, at me, his said, eyes went dead inside. I said, I'm nauseous. I said, let's go. Oh, we gotta go. Let's I said, no, 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 we can stay. No, no, no. We gotta go. I told him that. I said, we gotta go. It was a good spot. I want to go back, but it just made me nauseous. It was a nice spot, right? Because you have to do reservations. They like social distance was really good, but we did that. But other than that, honestly, y'all, we just made good food and we stayed up in the bed the whole entire time. And it was absolutely beautiful. Mm-hmm. Um, one of the things that we saw was the Bill Cosby doc by Kamal. Kamal I think that's his name. Yeah, Kamal Bill. Kamal Bill on Showtime. What's it called, Nero? Uh, we have to, I think it's called We Have to Talk About Bill Cosby. Cosby. We have to talk about Bill Cosby. It was very well done. At first, I didn't know if I was going to watch it because the whole Bill Cosby shit is just triggering right like it's just a lot of shit going on right and i think when people talk about bill cosby it's very much um you either you on one side right very rarely do you have people that's like he did fucked up things he also did good things how do we work through that and basically that's what this documentary is about it's a four-part docuseries on like he did horrible things and he did amazing things how do we come to the conclusion how do we work through it? How mm. do how do we live in a space where both things are true and not, you know, do you have the people who are complete Bill Cosby deniers, right? Like who are like, he didn't do any of this as a setup, as a conspiracy. He went to buy NBC. Mm. He did all the good things. It's a black man. All 183 women allegedly is lying. And you'd be like, ooh, 183 people lying? And NBC don't got to sell to Bill Cosby. Right. right, you know, it just don't add right. Then you got the people on the other side of like, that motherfucker dirty as fuck. Get rid of the Bill Cosby. Take Theo money. Take Felicia Rashad money. All the money he donated to the college. Take that away. Like, you know, you be like, mm-hmm. well, wait a minute. The people need that scholarship. Spell money ain't got that money no more. Right, right, you know, it's like that. Like, we don't give a fuck what he did with the stunt men. Take all the black stunt men. They're like, wait. Right, so it is that, but this mm. documentary did, I think, a beautiful job. Because at first I was like, "Why is this four parts?" Like, Jesus, how much are we going to dig into this? But they did do a really Kamal did that. He should be nominated for something. He yeah. did an excellent job of really telling a holistic story um, and letting the fat speak for itself, and also letting the um, unknown, the unspoken, sit there, and also letting the pain and the grief. Cause I even think this thing that happened with Bill Cosby, black people, we didn't even get a chance to grieve, right? Like we were grieving the, like this loss mm-hmm. in the community that yeah. I think a lot of people like it was shame. Like I can't grieve this. First of all, it's made up characters and he's a celebrity. Right. But it's still impactful. Right. Like, so he just did a good job of going back and forth between there. When I first started it, I was like, I don't know. Cause some of the people he had up on there, I was just like, oh, he done got Buzzfeed on that. I don't know BuzzFeed the most critical, right? Like, and he done got Martin from the show. Like, what is Martin doing on here? Right. Like, mm-hmm. At first, I was a little worried. Right. Then you got your media sweetheart folks who was always kind of showing up. Shout out to Mark Lamont and Jelani and them. You'd be like, oh lord, here they come. Right. Like, mm-hmm. they tend to always kind of popping up. Yes. When there's shit going on, but all in all, it's worth it. And I do think it was really, really well done. And like the question they leave is like, how do you separate the artist from the art? And, you know, how do you grieve a great loss? Um, and how do you just go through it? And I, I thought it was really, really good. Honestly, I learned a couple of things I didn't know about it, too. Mm-hmm. What do you think? Yeah, I, I think that was the the, the 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 thing I got out of the most, right, is that he's a piece of shit. He's done, you know, for the shit that he did. Yeah, you can't um, not rape women. Yeah. Yeah. He so he's a piece of shit for the women. things that he did. But also, how do you, like, however, once you talk about, like, entertainment and black culture yeah you can't erase his name because no you can't do that and like people are trying to erase all the things he's done so i I think that's the hard part it's like balancing that right like yeah he gave 20 million dollars to spell man yeah 
you know basically put um, HBCUs back on on the map on the map right created black stuntmen right created the field of black stuntmen mm-hmm. shit right like all these things you cannot deny right mm-hmm. but then and again in the same sentence is a serial rapist yes so like I, I think that's the hard thing and I think when we live in this day and age where women's cancer culture and we live in like black and white terms I think this is where some of the stuff gets lost at because you mm-hmm. have pretty much like an echo chamber of like things on both sides where it's like, he's amazing. He's America's dad and all he these other leave things. Him alone. Right. Yeah. Leave him alone. Yeah. And then the other end, he's a piece of shit. He should die in jail. We should yeah. take all the money from him and we should, all the uh, things, not even just him, all the all things, things and the accolades that he yeah. accomplished and things of that sort. We should take all those things away. Uh-huh. And I think that, you can't do both. Yeah, right? somewhere in the middle. So it's somewhere in the middle, right? And and I think that's the hard part. What he did, he should have been put in jail a long, long time, time ago. ago. Yeah. Long time. A long time ago. Mm-hmm. But I think also some of the things he did, those things just couldn't be taken away. It ain't like Stiff Spellman going to give back that $20 million. Yeah. Or and whatever. it wasn't whatever. impactful to many lives. And it wasn't impactful. Because, like, I think because of a different world, I wanted to. Go to yeah. a black college. Yeah, absolutely. And like be Greek and things right. of that sort. And right. if it wasn't for that, I don't, you know, I, I probably yeah. wouldn't went to a black college yeah. for my first couple of years. Yeah. Um, but like I, I think that's the thing, right? Yeah. It it has so much of an impact on us as a black community. Yeah. When you think about the the other T V shows that was out there and things of that sort, that he kinda paved the way for that. Mm-hmm. But also understanding that he's a piece of shit. And we should have known something was brewing when he got. It's a whole. I think it's the last part when they talk about where he was still white America's dad, but he was black people cranky grandpa. Yes, like it was like it, it was interesting because I also forgot that his son was shot, mm. murdered. Right, like it was just a lot of things that were going on that. Um, now that I was able to take a step back and just connect all the dots, but y'all watch it for yourself. I thought it was really really well done. Um, it's a longer watch, um, so make sure you have some time. But I really appreciate it. My last statement is like, do you think? Are you about to say something? What I think you about to say? Do you think Camille? Child. That's the question everyone's scared to ask. Allegedly, maybe alleged. I don't know. I don't know what she knew and what she didn't know. Yes. What her responsibility in it? I have no idea. I'm not even ready to ask that question. Ask that question yet? Because they've been married for a very yes long time, and McK- M- Camille is not a stupid woman. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's one thing she's not. So, like, I, I just think about that. And I mean, like, she could have been in a situation where she thought she he was just fucking bitches, right? Like, that is completely true, where he's like, he, it is what it is. He's in the business. They got this agreement that he gonna fuck bitches, but I don't want to hear about the bitches coming here. Don't bring me nothing home, right? But I don't know. So I think that's the hard part is like. That's a question. No, You notice people really, I think maybe one person asked on the documentary, mm-hmm. but they left that alone. They just touched that with a 40-foot pole. Yes. But the people don't ask about Camille. And it's not her responsibility, right? Like, she did not rape anyone. So she should not be held accountable. Mm -hmm. But then it comes into, did you know? Mm -hmm. It then didn't say nothing? Exactly. So I think that's the, I think that's one of the questions. I'm definitely not ready to ask that question to Camille. I'm definitely not ready for that. I'm still on Bill Cosby. I'm definitely not. I think that was definitely one question that I also had. Like, you know, of course we talk about, like, who are these people who like, who knew? was the accomplices, right? If we're thinking about, yeah. like, the R. Kellys and the Epsteins, right? For for men to get to this level of, like, taking advantage of folks, they don't do it alone. Like, mm-hmm. that's just, like, patriarchy isn't only done by men. Yes. Right? Like, sexism is only not only held up by um, men. Or racism is not only held up by white people. Mm-hmm. Black and brown people participate in racism. That's why it goes on. Same thing with this type of behavior. It's not just one person. So that was just my un- my open question. I'm not ready to address it. Alleged, allegedly. <laughs> Next topic. Speaking of legends, y'all see Janet Jackson? Her doc on Lifetime. I'm just gonna run through things. First of all, Janet Jackson is sickening. In all you Gen Zs who act like the fuck you didn't know that, you better put your respect on Janet Jackson. You better go do your research because without Rhythm Nation would be no fucking formation. And I thought that you um. I almost said something really derogatory. <laughs> I, I thought that you people knew that. <laughs> what you thought was I, I'm about to go down the route. I, I thought y'all knew that. What you? Why are you laughing? Because I thought you gonna say I thought y'all funky bitches knew that. I was gonna say Nicholas. <laughs> what you say? Oh, that's even worse. <laughs> 
Allegedly. No, just just don't allegedly. I thought y'all knew that. But she's sickening. Put respect on her name. And she, yes, we know she whispers. Okay? We know she whispers when she talks. Sometimes she whispers when she sings. Jimmy Jam and them told her that. We was in the scene. <laughs> y'all see what Jimmy Jam was like, Jenny, you got to give us something. And he was like, she's like, what? What? Jimmy? What? what? She's what, like, Jimmy? give me some heart. And she's like, what? I've been doing it all. I've been singing Put all this time. Also, Michael told her too when they was doing Scream. He, he was like, give me that energy and black cat. Don't do not do what you be doing now. <laughs> Michael got a shady. <laughs> Michael Jackson looked like he gave a good read. You know, they said Michael was Michael always Jackson so looked like he ain't play about his shit. Even with his sister. Because you know. they was writing a scream and going back and forth. But he was like, he ain't say this, but this is what I interpreted it as. Don't come on here singing all that quiet shit. Like, you got to be intense. You know, got to mean Jackson. what you say. Say what you mean and send your shit. Because also, Michael don't whisper when he's saying. No. He good for hollering. What about us? What about us? What about the babies? You know, he get that yeah. rasp and that church in him. Yeah. <laughs> he get that uh, Jehovah Witness church. Come on. You know, the Pentecostal. Michael Jackson is a thug. <laughs> he gangster. Ah, the more unreleased film I see of Michael Jackson... He didn't fuck around with you, motherfucker. You're fired. You're, you're fired. fired. Tell the people about that one. Do people remember that? You're fired. You finna lose your job. Tell the people about the clip you're talking about. Oh my god, there's a clip on YouTube. Let me see if I can find it. Yeah. Where Michael Jackson fired somebody during the performance because the dude a, a rehearsal because the dude wouldn't go on to the next song. And like he kept saying it. <laughs> you're fired. And you like, finna lose your job. Like, he was like, change the song. And then he like sung. You know, black folks will sing. Change the song. And he was like. You're fired. You're going home, Robert. Because I done told you. You're fucking my shit up. And this was like. <laughs> on, beat. on beat. On <laughs> beat. Did you fire it? Yes. It's only 47 seconds. Okay. You're going to try to do it now? Yeah. Okay. Make sure the volume of y'all get prepared. It's going to be a commercial. You know it's YouTube. Oh. Yep. Oh, you know YouTube. 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 Fucking YouTube. They known to do it with a commercial, oh ain't they? Oh, my God. These motherfuckers just irritated me. What? <laughs> You know YouTube, they be doing commercials at the beginning, every five minutes, and at the end with the last 10 seconds yes. left. They be like, oh, wait, they got 10 more seconds to talk. Do you want this? Uh-oh. The music director Brand was supposed to end the song, but did it. It's a breakdown. Tell me. Tell me. Tell me. Tell me. He just stood and looking, disappointed. His hands on his forehead. Break down, break down. down, gone, job gone, job gone. Brad, Brad. And then the music stopped, and he just put his hand in his. Brad, uh, on what his are you going to do? You're fired. 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 <laughs> so it's shit like that, like he got it. He not got it. He is a G. So shit like that, or um. There's the story where when you were in Eminem used to go hard on uh, Michael Jackson and his songs or like mock him. Mm -hmm. Michael Jackson got so mad that he bought all of Eminem's publishing. <laughs> with one fell swoop. Yes. With his um with his rush card. And then he do that with the, <laughs> rush card. Then he do that with the Beatles too. Yeah, he did buy the Beatles catalog. And then he like, you know, he'd just do shit like that. B bought Eminem's catalog. Bought the Beatles catalog just because of like a beef. Michael Jackson's petty. <laughs> <laughs> he is a thug, allegedly. But Michael Jackson does not fuck around. <laughs> <laughs> and now that I'm old, I feel like I see it more. They be like, oh, I can show you. He basically, I show you better than I can tell you. Job about. gone. Job, Job gone. gone. Brad. <laughs> Brad, what are you going to do? do? <laughs> is you ending the song? Break he down. And I think it was longer. I don't know if that was a clip, but it was longer. Yeah, he it was, was like, so clip. are you in charge or I'm in charge of the girls? So it was a, a longer clip. The clip was like five minutes long. Yeah. Of like... Them going back and forth. Yes. Like, so who in charge of this? I told you to end the song and you kept going? Break down. Break, break down. <laughs> <laughs> what are you going to do? Um, but that was gangster. You're going to be homeless. <laughs> <laughs> so Janet Sickening, you better put respect on her. I actually like the Janet Jetson era. Like that came after Rhythm Nation. Control mm -hmm. necessarily wasn't my favorite era. I think I was just too young and didn't get it right. Mm -hmm. um, but I did, honestly, everything after 
that I was on it. And honestly, even just the Janet Air Velvet Rope, you cannot tell me I cannot do the I Get So Lonely Breakdown, okay? I'm going to break it down, break it down. Oh. That is the shit. Then she in that rain. Mm-hmm. And she's like, every time I hold you, but you are. Yes. All of that, I'm there with Janet. Remember when she did the thing with Cab Calloway? Yeah. Like the tribute to her. Like, we talking about legendary shit. Um, that when she come on here, she's not playing. I think about the magazine where she's on Rolling Stones or something, and yeah. she, her husband was just holding her titties up, yep. and she was sickening. Like, how was Janet Jetson not a, a set symbol, whisper sick? She was on all things. Anyway, let me get back to the documentary. It was amazing. Things I learned and or thought throughout the documentary. So, like I said, Janet Jetson sickening. Stevie Wonder was her cousin. Did y'all know Stevie Wonder and Janet, the Jetson families are cousins? How was, what? That was not common knowledge. It wasn't. I didn't know And she know just that. slid it in there. Yes. How? I need more questions. Is it Catherine people? Yeah. It can't be Joe Jackson people because we would have knew. It's on her mama's side. It got to be Catherine people. Um. Also, I learned that, who is it? Janet only, um, Janet, don't mess with LaToya, Jermaine, Jackie, or Marlon. <laughs> Janet only mess with Randy, her mama, and Reby. And Michael. Sometimes. Because even that, she said, I stand by my brother, but it ain't what it was. <laughs> he said, he got Hollywood. I said, well, he's Michael Jackson. <laughs> Janet don't mess with Toya, Jermaine, Jackie, or Marlon. Allegedly. Allegedly. <laughs> did you see him in the documentary? I did not see him in the documentary. I kind of get the Toya, because I feel like that family had messed with Toya since Toya was allegedly like, yeah, he did it. And the family looking at her like, bitch, who asked you? <laughs> Ain't nobody come to you for comments. <laughs> she redacted. <laughs> but I knew since then they ain't messed with Toya because that's when Toya then went on her whole game when she was on OWN and she was talking about unicorns and shit. Mm-hmm. She started getting that surger- surgery. Then she was on The Apprentice and they started saying, like, Toya, Toya. But Jermaine, Jackie, Marlon, allegedly, I didn't even see a picture of them. Sure didn't. I didn't even know they was in the Jacksons. <laughs> I just seen Randy. I seen Randy. I a seen lot. Holy Ghost Reba. <laughs> Reba Holy Ghost. She is. She is Holy Ghost, honey. I like it all. Um, what else we seen? We learned that Catherine worked for Mama Catherine, aka Mama Jackson, worked for Sears. Janet. Why we had to know? We also learned that Jermaine Debris cheated on Janet Jackson before he got his teeth fixed. A scheme that Todd set that up. A this. scheme. <laughs> The audacity, the audacity of black men, of Janet Jackson, at prime Janet Jackson, mind you. She's prime, about to have all them babies for that Janet nigga. Jackson. In the interview, she said, I just love him and I just want to have as many kids as he wants. <laughs> but I might regret that later. You did. She had not one kid. And then Jermaine, no, he fucked up so bad. He appeared on a documentary and she made him say it. Yes. And he got on there and smiled with his new teeth. I had the nerve to giggle. Nigga, ain't no fun and games. Are you kidding me? You cheated on Janet Jackson with somebody from North Atlanta? What are you saying? Being with Janet makes uh, other women wants to be with you. Or some shit like that. Stupid shit. How dare. How dare. I was shocked. Like, I feel like I knew that rumor. But for them to say it and make it plain, it was almost too much for me to handle. What's wrong with y'all? And then when Janet was like, I literally just wanted him. Yeah. And he wouldn't give me 30 minutes to eat a ham sandwich with him. Nope. I said, Bow Wow music wasn't that important. <laughs> <laughs> and Diddy would beat him in the verses. I put my, be- I, now I put the gamut down. Oh my God. What, what do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> what they fighting over that? Yes. I vote Diddy. So I repeat. So he cheated before he had teeth done. She really loved him, really wanted to work with him. That was interesting. We also learned that Janet married James DeBarge, and he was on that shit. Mm -hmm. That ain't allegedly. (laughs) The Barge family went through it. They were. were She also got a type with men. Shout out to Renee, her other husband. They, like, control. Like, what's, Janet had a type, though. Yeah, she had, allegedly had daddy issues. They kept Joe kind of clean on this one. I think she just let the dead rest. Mm-hmm. Um, they ain't speak on the dead like that. No. Janet Jackson, baby daddy got long money. Because we didn't even mention, she didn't even say his name. And she only showed one toe of her baby. <laughs> 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 I 
Just the baby talk. What is that man's name? I, don't I know, know he's like a billionaire oil tycoon mm-hmm. in the Middle East. Let's, let me see if I but can. But whatever this divorce decree, divorce decree said that Janet can't even say his name in public. Because she went in detail on James, Renee. She talked about Jermaine Dupree. When she talked about You talking about Wasam? Yes. What's his name? Wasam Al Almana. Wasam Al keep my name out of my mouth. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Didn't even mention it. And you know, I thought and the thing is she didn't have to be shady to him, but I thought it was gonna be talk more mentioning about her and him having a baby, right? Like mm-hmm. I thought she was gonna pivot that way to be like me and what's this gentleman's name? Hassan. Wasan. Wasan. Um Hassan, Wasan and I didn't work out, but he gave me the child, blah, blah, blah. Like, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Like we had this child together and it was a beautiful life. I thought that's how she was gonna pivot the conversation. Like she didn't talk about Wasan. She didn't talk about when she used to wear them capes and shit. And be wrapped up. Mm-hmm. Like, Janet Jackson was a whole different bitch for about 10 years. Yes. And she didn't even address it. Like, I thought she converted religions. Yeah. And she didn't even talk about that. And the thing is, when she talk about it, she don't got to talk about it in a negative light. Mm-hmm. I'm just interested in, like, what happened in her life to be like, yes, I'm willing to make these changes and shifts to be with this man, to be a part of this culture, to be a part of this religion, allegedly. And, like, this is how it shaped me in moving forward. Like it's a way she could have said it without being like he trash. He did like she. I wasn't. I wasn't expecting that at all at all. Especially since they have a child together, right? Mm-hmm. Like it's a different. It's a level of decorum that even if your man, baby daddy, ain't no billionaire and got this pool that you do want to keep, right? Because this is record for your children to see um, down the road. But whatever's in that the divorce decree, she didn't even say his name. Mm-mm. All I know is I think the baby named Iris. That baby Iris got a cute little toe, and I'm assuming. That the baby cute and Janet looked good though. She does. Also, why did I miss that Janet was fifty when she had that baby? Well, I thought she was like forty five. Fifty. Because I was like, people in their forties have kids, but fifty. Fifty. Five All right, Miss Jackson. But when your baby daddy got loan money. Five zero. Also, Janet don't want want, want us to forgive Justin, but we won't. <laughs> she spent ten minutes telling us to get over it. Right. We're not, Janet. It's okay. It's Janet, okay. we're not. I told Justin no. not to say anything. No. I told him not to say Janet, anything. Janet, no. We're not over it. We're not, Janet. <laughs> not what he did to Britney Spears. We're not over it. We're not what he did with you. <laughs> not what he did to the black community. Oh, taking our shit, dancing and dancing. Dancing and then, and then now he, he done, do folklore music. Now he in the woods. We're not forgiving him, Janet. Oh, then lastly, Lifetime is invested in black woman trauma and or made for TV movies. It is. Because right after it, we got K. Michelle. Uh, is that her? Yeah, K. Michelle's show about the killer bodies. Mm-hmm. Then we got, um, why they do this? Is Raven Goodwin and what's the other girl name? Mm-hmm. Amber yeah. Riley. And y'all about? say, look a lot. They doing a single black female. Y'all already know that people, it's hard to tell them apart. And y'all gonna put them in the same movie? <laughs> Y'all really trying this shit. It's it's going to be a debacle when that comes out. I hope y'all know that. You going to watch it though? Yes. Oh. <laughs> then they got this other show with, is it Jill Scott and Kira Sheard again? And it's about sorority sisters. So you got a, you got a movie about sorority sisters. I think none of them women got in the sorority. Did even them graduate college? Again, I love both of them. All of them who's in it. But why Lifetime? I got my eye on Lifetime. White lifetime is Life, uh, white white lifetime. White lifetime is a thing of a past. Lifetime is really invested into black women. Like I'm waiting for them to do like black. I'm so I'm waiting for them to do like lifetime New, New York. No, what's it called? Noor. <laughs> black. Yes. Like lifetime, lifetime cocoa black. butter or like I'm waiting for them to say something like that. Lifetime soul or some shit. Like I'm waiting for lifetime. Don't do that to Fox Soul. I'm <laughs> waiting for lifetime soul to come out. Cause they're creeping at it. Mm-hmm. BT her should have looked out because this is what BT her should have did. Yeah. But BT her just playing Erica Badu's songs. We want movies. We want information. But I did enjoy the Janet Jackson doc. Um, she definitely edited. It. <laughs> she definitely told us what she wanted to tell us. Mm-hmm. It was a bop. Um, like I said, some gaps, but she has the right to her privacy. You gotta tell us all the stuff. I think she she told her story. She told us what she wanted to tell us. She surely did. And I enjoyed it though. I enjoyed it because I am a fan of Janet Jackson. Um, and it was good to honestly just see her have a conversation. I don't remember the last time she just did an interview and talked towards the camera. And you can see it took a lot of it or two. Like, even though we like Janet, say the thing. She was like, you know, I there's just, so many uh, other things, un- uh, what are unauthorized biographies and things of that sort. I might as well just do mine. 
The one time and one time and only. only. She she was trying to pull a Tina Turner, but Tina Turner told her everything. Because Tina Turner said, I did what love got to do with it. I'm giving y'all this one more thing and leave me the fuck alone. <laughs> exactly. Stop talking to me about Ike. That's what Tina said. Yes. Stop talking to me about him. Did you see the movie? <laughs> did you see the movie? Did you watch the documentary? No comment. But I appreciate it. Janet was good. It was good to see her. Um, also, like, you know, just her accolades. I loved at the end how we was giving her her flowers, and she should have been in a Rock and Hall Hall of Fame. Like, Janet was not playing, and a lot of these girls couldn't even, even think of doing the shit they did if it wasn't for Janet Jackson. So, like... Put respect on her name, put respect on her craft, put respect for all the ceilings that she busted open for the girls to be here. And honestly, for the girls, some of the girls here don't, never mind. we're not going to do that. Some of the girls need to go study. And Janet Jackson got a nice catalog for them to go study. Nero, any other thoughts on the Janet Doc? It was highly entertaining. Go watch it if you haven't watched it yet. And last thing I want to say, not much to say. Y'all just be vigilant. Um, I've been just putting some stuff together. You know, unlike Niram, I am in CBT therapy and I do journal and I do have to reflect and put when I'm <laughs> sad down. So I just been reflecting on like the not passing of the voters <laughs> right bill. They're banning books. Y'all like they just banned the Toni Morrison, um, the bluest eyes and many more. Um, the end of affirmative action. People are having conversations about overturning that, the overturning of Roe v. Ray, these Trump rallies. As you look around, the signs are coming back, you know, make America great again, you know, very just white supremacist signs and um, just hate, right? Like, or this idea of men not having rights and white people not having rights. It just feels like we've been here before and the writing's on the wall. Yes. Right? Like, it's very propaganda-ish. Um, it's very much giving me reliving Jim Crow is very much given the rise of Hitler, right? Yeah, like if is. we, if we know our history of how, um, how Hitler came into power when he first came out, people told him it was ridiculous. Get him out of here. It's, rid- it's crazy. Right. He went away, came back, came back even stronger with this type of propaganda. Right. I think about with us having Donald Trump, he got in, it's ridiculous. Get out of here. But it's something to brewing. Either Trump going to run for president again or somebody worse than him is going to run again. And I, I, it's just, the propaganda, the writing on the walls, the things that are happening, right? Like with the police enforcement and the killing of black bodies, the the loss of life that's happening, the sense of hopelessness that people are feeling. Um, I think just literally as we're recording it, it came out that I think it's like Miss New York or Miss USA or Miss World literally just jumped out of uh, a window um, oh, wow. and died by suicide. Like it is what's happening Right, like, and I'm trying to take a step back and um, really understand, like, my part in it. And my part meaning, am I just being passive and allowing this to happen and just letting life happen? You you know, Mm -hmm. like, you know, where's my part and when I have to stand up and say something, when do I have to be an activist, an ally and ran my raise my fist and say, this can't happen anymore. Right. Like, and I'm just feeling that urge brewing again, where I have to take more of an active role when it comes to this life that I'm living, human rights, um, reproductive rights, race. Like it's something has to give y'all. And I don't know about y'all. Like I'm just feeling it in my spirit. I just see it as I'm writing in my journal, as I'm reflecting, you know, as I'm talking with my maker, like my, the ancestors is telling me this has happened before Mm -hmm. we have a playbook, follow the playbook and don't let all our hard work go to waste. And I'm just triggering out like, what does action look like? Yeah. And I'm trying not to be frozen or paralyzed by all the stuff that's coming in because was in our generation, not that this stuff didn't happen prior to, but with the advent of social media and technology, it's happening in our hands. Yes. And are we desensitized to it compared to if we just had a TV or a newspaper and we hear it on the radio and it's like, Oh my goodness, right. we got to get up out of here. We got to stand in the streets where it's just like, ping. Oh, another books ban. Ping. Oh, you right. can't say gay in school. Ping. What Donald Trump say that what, like, yeah. it's just normal. And I'm being conditioned that this is life and it does not have to be that way. So I have been thinking, how do I actively um, like re-engage, right? Because I even hear people saying, I agree. Like sometimes you can't watch the news and do all that, right? But I don't think we all can stop at the same time, right? Like we look, we need a rotation, right? Mm-hmm. We, can't, we can't all tap out at the same time right. and then wake up in a year to be like, what the handmaid's tale are we living in? And um, again, not fully thought out, 
but be village, vil, vil, um, be aware, yes. be diligent. You it's a lot. On no, I, I think it is a lot, right? Of really understanding all of the things that's going on. You know, I, I think we talked about this uh, for the past two podcasts, right? About just the things that's been going on from like the the reversal of the black migration of like black and browns moving back down south. Um, all of these uh, voter rights laws are, you know, are either getting overturned. Like all of this stuff is happening. Yeah. And it's happening right in front of us. Like we are literally living through history right now yeah. and like what are we going to do about it in order to prevent this mm-hmm. and i think that's the hard thing right it's like knowing that all of us all have our own separate lives and things of that sort but also you know it's a statement that always sit with me is that you know separately we beg but together we bargain yeah. so like how do we bring together throughout all the echo chambers and like really come up with something that's going to be useful for like the future. Because mm-hmm. it's, yeah, so much more to us. It's, it's time for us to put in a little bit more work, I think. Thinking about that. Mm-hmm. Stay tuned. And let us know y'all thoughts. If y'all have some thoughts you're thinking about it, you're feeling it too. We want to affirm that. But it's something definitely stirring. Absolutely. Close us out, near. As always, to submit your Black Love story, go to blacklovematters.com. To submit a question for Kitchen Table Talk, shoot us an email, blacklovematters at gmail.com. And uh, if you got a comment about anything we talked about, head on over to the SoundCloud Um and we got that voicemail at 508-784-1111. Once again, that's 508-784-1111. Talk to y'all later. Remember, love, love is ever evolving. evolving. Peace. Peace.